Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we will be talking about turning on a mill with Gipscam. My name is Andy Hefner, I'm an applications engineer with 3D Systems Gipscam. Feel free to ask questions. You may ask questions by typing them in the Q&A panel throughout the presentation. Questions we cannot get to during this live session will be answered offline following the webinar. Also, the session is being recorded. With that all said, let's jump into it right away. Let's fire up Gipscam. Here we are. And let's load our part that which we will be talking about today and here we are this is a, a turn part mill part um, it's called the control valve we're gonna do some turning on it and milling drilling holes and so on so let's have a look at our document control first so we get a little bit an idea about the size of the part so in X we are about five inches in plus and five inches in negative and the same thing in Y we are about se almost seven inches in Y plus Y minus and uh, so that gives us about a part uh, cube of uh, like 13 by 10 inches by 10 inches, something like that, similar to that. All right, we will be programming in inches today. It's going to be on an Okuma MU5000V. Okay, with that said, then let's look at the machine right away. So I'm opening machine simulation. are and as you can see of course there's a lot of covers around that machine um, what we will do we will look at it without the covers let me go into our view panel right away and I'm gonna go hide all the covers so we basically see the machine naked with just our access components and so on so just to give you an idea what our axes are on this machine, of course we have a Z axis going up and down. Then we have our Y axis also up there on the tool, like the Z. Then we have our X axis that's on the part. Then we have our a axis that's our trunnion table that swings around like that then we have our rotary table which is also our lace spindle like on a vertical lace or if you swing it around it would be a horizontal lace there we go and then finally we have a controlled axis on our tool on our boring bar okay with all those axes now available, we can do some really nice uh, turning on a milling machine. Well, let's switch off our machine simulation and look at the part again a little bit closer. So we're going to do some turning, um, the ID and the slope here. Um, and then uh, we flip the part around, do some machining on this face, and then also machining on the other end face. We do some machining on the inside, we groove inside. And for that, we need, of course, some tools. And as you can see, since we are talking about turning on a milling machine, we have turning tools. Look at that, all right? And here we have milling tools. And while I'm actually on that, um, I'm going to open up some of these tools to give you right away an idea uh, what's going on, what, you, what we have the selection on our machine. So we have here, we have all our milling tools available as well as our turning tools with the standard inserts. Um, this particular tool has actually a little bit something special. Um, let me zoom in with this one. 
this is a boring bar that's actually sitting it's going to be mounted into the spindle but it is on some kind of intermediate tooling holder that we can adjust and slide the, bo the boring bar around and you will see that later on in machine in machine simulation um, and we'll explain a little bit more about it okay then we have a grooving tool this is being used let me move that around so you have a little bit a bit of view of it it's a grooving tool that grooves those little this little uh, groove inside of our part on the ID there's this little groove um, that we will be grooving with this groove tool ID groove tool then we have another turning tool to turn a little step on the outside and then some different boring bars and then some spot wheel drill a drill and a spot wheel and a tap um, and another drill um, and a, an end mill half an inch end mill we're gonna drill and mill our holes in the part on the flange so with all that with a little bit of tool introduction I want to look at our operations first let me go get go into our coordinate system here we have our main coordinate system which is the xy coordinate system and then we're going to use the other ones as we go through the part now over here we have our operations that we already have created and we start out with a boring bar actually tool number four that's this guy and we're gonna turn that little shoulder on the ID. Let me click on that again so I get my machining markers back. Okay, this is that little uh, uh, ID um, diameter. With that, we turn that, and then we use the same tool and come up on our slope and turn the face. After that, we're gonna do some turning off that step on the outside. I wanna zoom in, yep, there we go, see? We're gonna do that little step with a little bit of different tool. And then we gonna go over to our side flange, flange there, okay? So and this is gonna be in a different coordinate system. I'm switching to that right now. So I got my machining marker. So what we'll be doing, we'll be turning um, with another boring bar coming down that face to that step. And since I mentioned a little earlier with my other tool, with doing the inside of that bore over here, there's also a nice step in there. So we're gonna do this all uh, contour turning and then Finally, we will do our groove, that tiny groove there inside of that diameter with our groove tool that I just shown you. Then we will do something a little bit fancy. We're gonna do our five axis deburring. Since it's open right now, this is our five axis deburring. So we're gonna deburr that outer edge along that flange there. Um, you see the tool pass, our red tool pass going around. Um, and then we come into the other milling portion, which is basically drilling, spot drilling, and tapping our holes on that side. And after that, we're gonna drill our holes on the side flange and another set of holes on the other side of the part. Okay, this is the plan. With all that said, let's jump into machine simulation. Here we go. All right, let's get started. Let me slow it down so we are not right away confused what we see. So we are turning that inside diameter 
with our turning spindle. It's not the rotary table. Yes, it is basically on that row, but it is really our turning spindle in this particular case, since we are really turning and not milling. So we did that. So now we are turning that slope again on our turning spindle. Go over to the face. You can unzoom a little bit. And then, actually I wanted to do some other thing. I wanted to set something, stop before every tool, and we continue on. Now we are turning with that 35 degree insert. We are turning our little step there on the outside of our flange. All right. It's getting a little tight here on that side, you know, when we turn around, so we got to be careful. And that's why our machine simulation comes really handy to see where are we, how close are we hitting or not hitting, hopefully, with our uh, tool spindle and our part. So machine simulation is a big help here. Let's speed it up a little bit. All right, our next tool is going to be ready soon, should come down. So now here, this is turning the face on the side flange of our part. And this kind of turning we call interpolation turning. So what's happening here with that tool and our controlled C axis on the tool, we can now have our boring bar rotate around the part and our Y and X axis are basically interpolating with our rotation of our tool, of our boring bar. And that's called interpolation turning. So we are now really using our milling spindle. Um, and turning the part. All right, let me speed up that a little bit and I move my slider like this. And it should give us a real rapid kind of move. Now you don't even see the tool rotating anymore since we sp we're speeding it up to the maximum. All right, we can slow it down. Now we pick up a little bit, actually we reset the tool for our ID turning and here we are we did reset that tool and now we are doing our ID turning with interpolation turning and as you can see there's still a little motion in our linear axis the X and the Y axis um, so we are still doing that but I use the benefit of this tool that I can put my boring bar um, let's say eccentric in our tool spindle and that helps me minimize our linear movements in X and in Y. All right. Pretty soon we are done with this. All right, here we go. And Okay, now we are doing our little groove inside this diameter. That should actually go pretty quick. I speed it up a little bit. And here we go. And it's getting to be done. And now we're going to go back to our, well, let me see. What's next? Yeah, we're finished with turning. Now we do our five axis deburring using a ball end mill. And let me do this. This is our five axis. When I highlight that, it turns yellow. All right. You can see we get a nice little deburred 
It's not a chamfer, it's basically deburring that edge with our 5-axis deburring. And if you want, we just can have a look at real quick at our axis movement so we really see our rotary table rotating around the c-axis, the x-axis, the y-axis and the c-axis because the z-axis has to go up and down since I tilted that a little bit to get my tool better inside of that and close this done and we go to our next tool which is and the next operation will be drilling these holes actually I'm using a, uh, an end mill I'm actually helical milling um, those holes which we then showed after speeding it up a little bit again we will spot drill and then we will tap it done. Next tool, bringing back a spot drill, spot drilling those holes and we will come back and tap those holes. Okay, done with that. Now we're gonna go to our side flinch. Ooh, it was a little fast. And spot drill those holes on both ends of the part all right and then this is our getting close to our end of the part spot drill here oh actually yeah spot drill there and we are done so, this is it. So, this is uh, one example how we can do turning on a mill. Of course, our mill needs um, turning capability. This is a must. Okay, with that all said, I would say this is it. I open it up now for questions.